people aren't finding something wrong with you because it's not in, in my body. Like a doctor is not going to find it. I realized, and I had to admit to myself that it's stress. Mm -hmm. It was the stress of actually doing something that I was doing for a purpose, but not truly for me. Welcome to the Wear, Wag, Repeat podcast. I'm Tori Mystic. As a dog mom lifestyle expert, blogger, and business owner, I love talking to other women in the pet industry and sharing their advice with you every week. Sit, stay, and listen to the latest episode. On this episode, I am sharing a conversation with Jocelyn Mizrahi, the founder of Dog Mom Lifestyle's Subscription Box. Jocelyn talked to me about how she was inspired to get into the pet industry after becoming physically ill from the stress of her previous career. Although entrepreneurship is not an easy ride, it's amazing how pursuing something that you're passionate about can make an impact on the quality of your life. If you're listening to this, I'm sure you get it. Working with our pets just makes everything better. Before we hit record, Jocelyn shared with me that this is really the first time that she's sharing her health issues that were caused by stress. Since she decided to be transparent about this story, she's felt a huge shift. She told me that being 100% you removes a lot of fear because you're being honest all the time. There's nothing to worry about being revealed. Speaking of the judgment-free zone, part of the Dog Mom Lifestyles subscription box includes an online community that is a safe space for dog moms to share what is going on in their lives. I never really thought about a subscription box being a membership community until hearing about this. Towards the end of the episode, Jocelyn and I also talk a little bit about quizzes. She has a quiz on her website, and I also have a quiz to help you find your ideal petpreneur playlist. If you haven't taken it yet, go to wherewagrepeat.com slash playlist quiz, answer four quick questions, and you will discover your petpreneur personality type and 12 Wear Wag Repeat podcast episodes that are perfect for where you are in your career right now. It's at wearwagrepeat.com slash playlist quiz. Jocelyn Mizrahi is founder and CEO of Dog Mom Lifestyles and Boo Dog Lifestyles. She decided to leave the financial and insurance world where she worked for over 15 years to follow her lifelong passion, dogs. On her personal journey to release stress that was literally poisoning her to death, she learned that even if it's only once a month, allowing ourselves to receive something beautiful and give ourselves even just half an hour to enjoy it can absolutely transform our health relationships, work, and everything else that matters in our lives, most especially the health and happiness of our dogs. Her dog mom subscription box and community combines high quality items for mom and pup with a monthly ritual that helps dog moms relax and rejuvenate. Hi, Jocelyn. Welcome to the podcast. Hi. Thank you, Tori, for having me. Um, I'm so excited <laughs> to be yeah, here. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on. Um, we we just spent a while ch- chatting and catching up and talking about all kinds of things. Yes. Uh, and I was like, wait, we need to stop. We have to hit record um, so everyone can hear this great conversation. Um, so why don't why don't we start off this interview? Um, if you could kind of share. What sparked you to leave, uh, I'm sure, the prosperous world of uh, finance and insurance to start your own business and work um, 27 hours a day? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Subscription box. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's what we do. Uh, we work 80 hours to not work for someone else. Right. Right. <laughs> um, well, you know, what started it was um, I loved working in the financial industry. Don't get me wrong with that. Uh, but the real reason why I stayed there and I never left it was because I was a caretaker for my parents. So for me, I needed to know what, you know, I was bringing in something to make sure they were always taken care of always. And finally, while I was doing that and 
probably like with the last two years before I left, I was just getting really sick. I would feel really nauseous where I wouldn't be able to go in the office. And, you know, uh, it could be my stomach. It could be any kind of pain. And I was going to different doctors because I'm like, okay, it must be something I have, right? There has to be a name to it. And no one could figure out what was wrong with me for over two and a half years. This went on and it was different parts um, that I would, you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't basically eat. All I could do is eat chicken and white rice. It got to that point. Um, and I lost 30 pounds. So when you see all this happening and, you know, after a certain period, it's not about something's people aren't finding something wrong with you because it's not in, in my body. Like a doctor is not going to find it. I realized, and I had to admit to myself that it's stress. Mm -hmm. It was the stress of, uh, of actually doing something that I was doing for a purpose, but not truly for me. And once I was able to say that to myself, that was huge. But what I, what I've also found is that as a woman, I think one of the hardest things is when we have created a business, how do you just walk away from that? And that was the biggest thing. That was a question I got asked by numerous people. Um, you know, how, well, how would you walk away from that? Like literally. And you know, my answer is it wasn't about money. It's, 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 I want to be happy, but that was the one thing that kept me longer, uh, than usual was, right. was that question. Cause I'm like, yeah, why would I leave? Like I have something secure. Um, and there's so much pressure and people telling you, why would you leave this? What's why, what are you thinking? What's wrong with you? Yeah, absolutely. And so the biggest thing that makes me happy are two things, dogs and travel. Okay. So, um, this kind of now finally gets us over to the dog land world where I realized how different and how much better I was going to become because of my dogs. Um, so what I did was I first started a company called Boo Dog Lifestyles and I was still, I still had my business, but I was trained, you know, starting to learn things um, in the dog world. And what I was able to do was travel to different places, um, whether it was Italy or Spain or, or um, London. But the whole thing was I was traveling to go to different pet stores and to meet dog parents. Literally, I would literally go to these places and photograph people with their dog. And I would ask them if that's okay. And I was doing all of this because I wanted to show, uh, what I wanted to do was show people that no matter where you go, that, you know, the dog and the connection that you have with that dog, it's the same everywhere. And the love that you have, it is just, it's just so special. Mm -hmm. And at first it was going to be, um, matching accessories for the mom and the dog. So that also made me travel, uh, which was fun um, because I wanted to look for unique fabric. I didn't want it to be what everyone had. And by doing that, it opened up a door that I never expected. Just a whole world of new friends. Um, just It just made me feel so much better. And when I say in the first maybe three or four months, I went from trying everything in the planet that doctors were trying to give me to figure out what was wrong with me, why I literally couldn't even leave the house at this point sometimes. And that is what made the difference. I completely like just, just changed. And the one thing they couldn't say, of course, is it was stress, right? Because right. how do you, how do you blame it on that? But the truth was I was, I was literally poisoning my poisoning myself because I wasn't happy. And, um, and then dog mom. Yeah. Uh, I mean, your, your body creates chemicals and hormones when it's stressed that can probably get reach toxic levels if you're too stressed out and it can really affect you. Yeah. And affect you and your dog actually, mm -hmm. which is, I saw it on my dog. I could see that 
you don't see it right away, but after the fact, when you realize it, you also see like, okay, my dogs might've been pacing more or, um, uh, sleeping more, or just, they were acting different Mm -hmm. and you're aware of it, but you're not thinking it's because of you. Um, but from, from all of that COVID happened. And when COVID literally happened, I was just about to, with dog mom, um, with boo dog lifestyles, I was just about to go ahead and open, do trade shows. I was ready. COVID happened. And I sat back and I thought about, okay, what would really make sense for me to do? And with that time that I had, like just not really working Mm -hmm. um, anymore, because finally the business, that was it. It was gone two months prior to COVID, which was such a blessing. Um, But I wanted to be able to share my love of dogs with other dog moms because I saw it around the world. I see it here. It's just, it's a very unique community uh, that we all kind of come together. Um, And there's not a lot of judgment in those moments. It's about really you and your dog. It's very rare. Those, you know, when there's not judgments, that's very special to me, I think. Um, And I wanted to also focus on the part that, made me sick. Uh, literally, you know, it, it was stress. So I thought, okay, a dog mom probably would buy something for her dog instead of buying something for herself. Right. Cause I mean, for I, sure. yeah. I mean, how many times have you probably done that this week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do- dogs are, that's it. I mean, my dogs get, you know, sweaters, whatever, cashmere, It's for them, not, you know, not me. Right. (laughs) Um, It's amazing. And what I just, what I decided was I wanted to be able to help women um, actually really relax and de-stress a little bit and rejuvenate somehow, but with their dog, Mm -hmm. because if they're buying something for their dog, now they're also having something for themselves, but not only that, but by seeing your dog happy there's all these endorphins that are actually released in your own body. So when you receive this ritual box every month, you open it. And the first thing your dog comes, whether it's treats or the toy, it comes to take it away. And you're just enjoying that. And right there in that moment, your stress levels start to go down. And it's just a natural thing. You know, it's happening uh, just from your love of your pet. Right. And then with the items um, that are in the box, I have a blog on dogmomlifestyles.com. And there's a new theme blog every month where I go over each product and how to use it, the best way to use it. If you're trying to, again, the whole goal is to de-stress and rejuvenate and hoping that people go there and really listen to it, um, you know, read it and uh, really, really do it. And even if it's once a month, um, because that's the big thing, right? How could that happen? How can that help me if I do it once a month? Um, it's amazing what half an hour, an hour, diff- what it can actually do for you mentally. Sure. It's a mental escape. And no matter how perfect or not perfect, you know, everyone has a different opinion in their world of what's going on. But that that special time will make a difference because if you're stressed out, something's happening, you can go back and go, Oh, I was so relaxed because I let myself take a bath or I made some tea or I read a book and all these little things connect. I I love it. And I always, I see like the connection between, I think this appeals so much to dog moms or they can get it because when you're working with your dog, training your dog, You can see how taking a little walk with your dog for 10 minutes makes such an impact. Or if you're trying to train them to do something, all the trainers say, you know, limit your training sessions to 10 minutes and just do it, you know, every day a little bit. You don't need to have like a month long vacation (laughs) necessarily. Um, We can't all do that. So taking an hour to take a bath or read a book, you know, I think dog moms can understand how that works because it works for their dogs. Oh, absolutely. Uh, And, you know, a lot of us don't want to talk about that pain point of of stress. I said, like, 
the taboo word, but um, when you're happy, you know, your dog is showing that as well. Um, and it's more playful. And then you'll start realizing that um, you'll, you'll notice the difference in your dog after you realize that you're actually feeling relaxed. And that's the beauty of it, because then you know that your dog isn't absorbing that anxiety. Right. That, or the, and, and the stress that your body's giving out. Um, awesome. I, I love the mission behind it all. Um, I want to ask you too, cause we were talking a little bit about Stu McLaren, who's a membership guru. And, yes. um, since I have a membership, I've followed, I've listened to podcasts with him. I've kind of, I haven't taken his course, but I have followed some of his advice on things. Um, and I guess I never really thought of subscription boxes as a membership until you mentioned his name. And I was like, oh my gosh, it is a membership. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, why you decided to do this subscription model? And I know you mentioned like the, there's a community kind of aspect, like how does, how does, how are you kind of using your subscription box as a membership, I guess, instead of just selling products, you know, a la carte instead? Well, for me, actually, you know, doing, going through Stu's course, what I've learned is there has to be a reason why someone starts something. And when you start something, it's got to leave you, lead you to something that's going to help you. If not, then there's, what's that, per, you know, what's the purpose? It's almost like, oh, if I have ice cream, I'm going to be happy. Boom. It's as simple as that. So what I wanted to do that was different was not just, it's not about being just a box is focus on women, helping women really learn to relax and just be like just something so simplistic as that. And I remember when I open boxes, I get joy, I get excited. And, you know, even in bark box, I, I get excited too, um, for the dog, but by going through that, I thought it would be a great idea and being different, not just making it a course um, or just a community was to put things together, theme together to make sure that every month, a woman who would receive these items would see it as a stress reliever and they'd be happy for their dog, of course, but they see it's a stress reliever. And that alone was like the biggest thing for me. And the other part to it, of course, is the community where we have our dog moms that have subscribed and, you know, we, we, um, have every month we, when we open a box, I kind of go through, you know, what's in the box, but it's more about, okay, you know, how, what the tea and the tea strainer, let's say connects with this book or the coasters or Whatever it might be, there's a connection, but it all has to do with simply just relaxing. Um, And it's, it's a habit. It's just one habit, you know, one box once a month, but by doing that, it it makes a difference. And so, you know, from Stu, I wanted to make it different. I thought I'd add a little fun to it because I also like curating products. So sure. Yeah. So I wanted to do that. I like it a lot. Um, and I think it goes to show that we can all, you can learn something from, from everyone and kind of apply it and make it work for you. So, you know, Stu's all about these memberships. You didn't follow the exact path. You kind of made it work for what you wanted to do and created something that, that helps your customers achieve what you want them to achieve, which I think is the point of a membership. Yes, absolutely. Uh, for me, I, to be able to teach someone an eight week course about stress. I mean, even look, I went through the stress. I know what it feels like. I know how, how debilitating it can be. And you're just exhausted a lot. You know, you, someone's going on a hundred percent, you're at 50% because you're carrying all this weight. And to me, it wasn't about a course. It wasn't about talking and showing you slides It was really about connecting with you, you, the dog mom together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with the community, that's something that I wanted to do. And it's something that's part of your subscription, 
but I wanted dog moms to feel safe, have an area where they can talk about, you know what, I went through this, or I had anxiety or whatever the issue might be. It's safe because we're all, everyone has stress, right? Everyone does, but there's different levels. And sometimes it's really hard to talk about what's happening in your life. You two people that, you know, because it's a little bit different, um, or they don't have a dog Mm -hmm. and they don't realize how important your, your, you you know, your own well, your own well being is to your dog too. So, um, from what I've seen, it's just, uh, it's been really beautiful to see that connection and women actually using the products, which is that's, that was the goal, um, to actually relax. And that's the thing, that one word, that's what we're doing. We're just relaxing. Mm-hmm. And who knew it would be such a hard thing for some of us to do. Just to Oh, relax. yes. I believe it for sure. Did you hear the news? I created a quiz to help you find your petpreneur personality type. Answer four quick questions, and not only will you discover what type of petpreneur you are, but you'll also get a curated playlist of the Wear, Wag, Repeat podcast designed for exactly where you are in your pet business right now. From an underdog champion to a possum petfluencer or a prosperous petpreneur, each playlist includes 12 episodes from the archives. Plus, after you get your results, you'll receive a few emails from me with special advice to help you reach your pet business dreams. Take the quiz and fetch your results today at wherewagrepeat.com slash playlist quiz. Uh, another so another question I love to ask people on this show, and because we it's such a journey, you know, starting these businesses, pivoting, you know, refocusing or like honing in on what our mission is. So I, lately, I've been asking people, what do you know now that you wish you knew when you were launching this? So you launched Dog Mom Lifestyles in like October twenty twenty ish. So so what do you what do you wish Jocelyn back in October twenty twenty new, um, that would have helped you, I guess, um, grow better or faster or whatever. Hmm. I think if, when I started, if I knew all the people that are actually out there to help, to help you and actually asking for help, asking for help, that's the biggest thing. Cause we want to do things on our own and, that's the biggest thing to me that I didn't do that I would do today because you meet people that all have, you know, similar facets, let's say subscription boxes or courses, and they already know, they might know something that you don't and it's okay to ask you're new, uh, you're learning something. And sometimes we shot, we get shy and we just, you know, we don't want to seem silly or stupid, or it's a stupid question. Um, and that's how I felt, which everyone has some type, you know, a feeling with that. Um, but it was, it was really just yeah, asking people for help and connecting with those people because of that help. So I think that was the biggest, that was the biggest thing. And I think people in the pet industry love to help. Um, I think people are very mm-hmm. willing to, um, you know, tell you about their experience. I was actually, just writing an email about this very topic uh, to I, people who I, I created a quiz to help people like find a the, the Wear Wag Repeat podcast playlist that's perfect for them. Ooh. And one of the emails that they get after you take the quiz was like, I'll "Ask for help," because out of after interviewing hundreds of people, literally, um, the most common thing is I wish I had just asked for help, which sounds so simple (laughs) saying it like that. But, um, you know, I, I think we are so resistant to do that. We are. And I, I sometimes wonder as a woman, is it because of that? You know, if you don't want to ask a man or you want to be, so you know you can do everything yourself. Yeah, you just, um, you feel like you're supposed to know everything. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. 
that's it. We're the caretaker. We're, you know, we're, we're the, we're the one person that should be able to handle everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, which is a big, which is a pretty big thing to hold on your shoulders sometimes. Yeah. When I think that creates some of the, like some of the toxicness that we see, um, you know, of, of people criticizing everyone online. It's like, well, we don't all know everything shocking as that may be. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, it's okay to make mistakes and learn, um, and, and ask for help. I, I, I wish people would be a little bit more, um, just understanding of, of everyone else online, because, you know, we don't all know everything. No, we don't. And, and it's interesting when it comes to, you know, people making comments, the biggest area of those comments is when you start talking about your dog mm-hmm. and the different things that you believe for your dog are good or you know maybe not good. And that can start a whole series of just negative and positive, positive things. But there's certain things, again, even something as simple as that, just, it's almost like we have to just learn just, you know what, people have their opinion and that's okay because we learn from that and just accept it and go, okay, you know what? I don't agree with you, but I'm going to listen to what you have to say because it's, it's good to be informed on what other people think too, because one day that can come back and that might help you. Um, when you when I love your, that oh, you've sorry. created, you, and that's why, you know, I think it's so awesome. I know it's, it seemed like a tangent, but I was kind of just thinking about how you said you created such a safe place in your online community for your members and how they probably feel good asking for help or saying I'm struggling with this and that and the other thing. No, they definitely reach out for that. And um, what makes it easier is because dog pictures right? If they're feeling a certain way, like, how are you feeling today? And they'll put a picture of, of their dog or, or a picture of a dog in general. And this dog is just like dying, you know, laying out on the sofa. Like I just, I need a break. <laughs> and that's how they're feeling, but they can just, they can tell you through the description of that picture. And then it doesn't seem as scary. Like right. And we all get it. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Well, you had mentioned that you have a quiz yes. and I actually am just literally putting a quiz um, that's going to be on the website together. And yes, quizzes are so much fun. And what's going to be awesome about this is it'll help you find what your number one de-stressing ritual can be and how to go about it. And there's a little secret part that I don't mention in the beginning, but it also tells you what kind of dog mom you are. But my focus, again, I want to de-stress you. So that, that's the, you know, the big part. But it's on the website, uh, hopefully in about a week. So I'm Good. really excited. To, to Good. Well, I'm going to go take it. I can't wait. Um, so s- before we wrap things up, speaking of dog photos, um, I have to ask you about your dogs, who I'm sure you have lots of photos of. <laughs> yes. um, and you have, a, you have a little pack of your own there. So if you could kind of tell us about your dogs and how they came into your life, I think you have a fun story or two to share. Yes. So I have four dogs and I'm just going to go in the order of when I, you know, when I, when I rescued them. Um, My first dog is Buddy. He's an English shepherd. And I literally found him a couple of months after I lost my father. I went off to law school. And I was completely alone. And I was, it had been about two months. And all of a sudden I got lost. And there in the middle of nothing, I mean, literally, I was actually really scared. There's this dog, beautiful dog. I didn't know if he was an Australian shepherd. It didn't matter to me what he was. I'm just, you know, I'm taking that dog out of there. I screamed, is anyone around? Nothing. So I brought him with me. And Buddy, which now is now is his name, he ended up uh, being a keeper because I went and purchased him a leash and water that evening. And so he had everything. And between the seats in the car, after he had the water, he actually licked my cheek like as a thank you. Oh, and that that's that was it. But it, you're, like, you're, you're coming with me. <laughs> and I had two dogs at that time and, and it was in school. But that's yeah, that solidified his stay. 
um, Doba, who's a Doberman, she um, came from a puppy mill. And her story is that she actually came from Egypt, from Cairo, Egypt. She was saved and uh, they brought her over here. And what connected me to her was that one, I, I've always wanted a Doberman. I know so many of us do. And two, my father was born in Egypt, Cairo. Wow. And to me, those two things together, and she wasn't a puppy puppy, I could handle that. So Doba, you're in. That was it. She's in the group. <laughs> um, um, but that was an experience too, coming from a coming from a puppy mill. Mm-hmm. Because for her, she was a puppy. She didn't know anything about toys, uh, right. water. How to I be mean, a dog. How to, yeah. It, uh, the funniest thing was when she would drink water, she would actually literally dump her face inside the water which was sad, but also so sweet because she was just so excited that she has all this water. I don't know what to do with it. Um, you know, these little, the cute moments. And then the other two, Kobe, uh, he was simple. I was looking for a dog that could be a guard dog. Uh, when I had my, my, my business, my agency, and, uh, we were looking for a big dog and, uh, this is actually before Dova. I made a boo-boo, but, um, we ended up instead of getting a big dog, uh, we ended up getting a ten pound Chihuahua uh, Minpin mix that we rescued. <laughs> it, yeah, that was excellent it. guard dog. <laughs> yeah, perfect guard dog. And the fourth one is my mom's dog that she no longer could take care of, and she just whoop, joined the pack. Uh, so that's how you get four dogs living in Manhattan. And when you tell someone you have four, the look on their face is just priceless because you know, where's the space to keep them all? (laughs) Well, this is a safe place for, (laughs) for multiple dog, dog moms. Um, I love hearing from different guests. Um, speaking of chihuahuas, I had someone who had like six chihuahuas (laughs) Um, and she's like, they're like potato chips. I just can't stop. (laughs) I've heard that with that's funny. Greyhounds. If once you get one, you just, it's like a potato chip. You have to get another one. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't owned one yet, but I see what she's saying. I, I do. <laughs> well, and sometimes you just see the right dog. I, I saw a senior chocolate lab who was available for adoption a couple of weeks ago, and he was like about the same age as mine. And I was like, oh my God, this would just be meant to be, but it was not meant to be. I I, I reconsidered that for maybe the next chapter of my life when I have a little bit more space. <laughs> yeah. This, yeah. Space and also... I mean, you, you're always out and about. So that, yeah. Oh my goodness. That's when I just, I was sitting on the couch one night with my two dogs and me, and there was really not any more room for anyone else. And I was like, if I had a third chocolate lab, where would he sit? So, um, I think I'm going to stick with two for right now. (laughs) No, it's, I understand that. And, uh, I'm looking actually for a new sofa and the whole thing is with the sofa the measurements are based on the dogs all yes. being on the sofa. It's not yes. about us on the sofa. <laughs> That's how I buy things. I bought a, a, a paddleboard a couple summers ago and I was like looking at the weight limit on the paddle boards because I wanted all three of us to be able to go on it at one time. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, even the car. I, I got an SUV to begin with because of the dogs, the space. It's it's amazing. Um it's what we do for our dogs and the care and love we have for them. But, you know, for them, we're perfect. Like I like to use the phrase imperfectly perfect because no one is completely perfect and they love us no matter what. And we do and go through all of the stuff to make sure they're happy. When the biggest thing that they're happy about is just seeing you and that's their enjoyment, your home, you know, from work or whatever it might be. Um, but yeah, we do everything for our dogs and yes. uh, they just give us so much love uh, in return that that's the priceless thing. Exactly. And I think that's the perfect note to end on. So Jocelyn, if you could tell everyone where they can learn more about you and about Dog Mom Lifestyles. Absolutely. So my website uh, is dogmomlifestyles.com and you can go on there. You can see the different type of boxes we have, which ones, and they're all for de-stressing, 
but one has a t-shirt club attached to it. So you get a, a cute t-shirt every month, but you know, it has to do with dogs, but nothing, too, nothing, nothing cheesy. Very, very cute. Yeah. Um, of course. Uh, but um, yeah, you can go there or actually uh, Instagram, Facebook as well. We're on there too. You can start following us, which would be great. And definitely check out the website uh, on there. Because right now I have a PDF self-care booklet on there. So you can download that. And in a week, I will have the quiz up. So yes, I think the is, qu- by the time this comes out, the quiz may already be up. So the quiz will be up. <laughs> so we'll all go take the quiz. And um, yeah, and thank you, Jocelyn, so much for your time and sharing your story with us today. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me again. Um, this has been a wonderful experience to share um, how to overcome stress uh, just for, for us dog moms. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. What did you like most about this episode? Find me on Instagram at Team Mystic and let me know what intrigued you or what questions you have about starting or growing your own dog-inspired business. You can also screenshot this episode and tag me in your stories. I love to see who is listening out there. Some of the best conversations happen after the episode, right? So track me down over on Instagram or join the Wear, Wag, Repeat Labs Facebook group to connect with other dog-obsessed entrepreneurs. And as always, you can find all the links and resources discussed in this episode at wearwagrepeat.com slash podcast. See you back here next week.